Hello, my friends. Fall is finally here, and for many people, that means the season of soups, football, and pumpkin spiced everything. Welcome to Restaurant Recipe Recreations, a channel serving up your favorite restaurant recipes right in your very own kitchen. And of course, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to recreate the vegetarian autumn squash soup from Panera. Now this particular soup at Panera is a very popular one, but it is a seasonal soup and they've just recently reintroduced it for their autumn menu. Of course, there's pumpkin in it, butternut squash, carrot and onion, and some great aromatic spices like curry, ginger powder, and cardamom. It's finished with a little bit of heavy cream and it's all blended and pureed together. So in my opinion, it's actually more like a bisque. And then it's topped with some roasted and salted pumpkin seeds, which are also called pepitas. So let's go ahead and get started with Panera's autumn squash soup. But before we do, I would like to ask that if you're enjoying this channel, but most importantly, if I'm bringing you value by teaching you how to recreate your favorite signature dishes right in your very own kitchen, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me if you haven't already. And if you have, thank you very much. And if you like this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up as well. So the first thing that we wanna do is we want to roast our pumpkin and our butternut squash. So preheat your oven to 375, and I just have a sheet tray here with a piece of parchment paper laying on it. Cut the squash in half. Watch your fingers, watch your thumbs, watch your everything. Now with the butternut squash, I feel like you can just throw the seeds out. I don't think they're necessarily good or flavorful for anything but when we do the pumpkin, you may want to save the seeds. And then on a large sheet tray or baking tray, just place the squash face down. And then you're just going to do the exact same thing with your baking pumpkin. Please, folks, be careful. Watch your fingers, watch your toes, watch your thumbs. So my husband, my youngest son, and I went to Panera last night for dinner to do some research. Three cups of soup and three sandwiches were $57. I would like to say that I felt like it was worth it, but I would be lying to you if I told you that I did. See, even my dog is pissed off about it. <laughs> now, I have two main reasons of why I produce this channel for my viewers. The first reason is that perhaps you live far away from your favorite restaurant and you just are not able to get there as often as you'd like for your favorite dish. And so now you can recreate the recipe at home. And the other reason is for people that are just tired of paying that bill at the end of a restaurant meal. And trust me, I get it. I've spent an entire career in the hospitality industry and I know how expensive eating out can be. Like for example, in one of my videos, they teach you how to recreate the tomahawk steak from Fleming's which if you were to go there on the menu, costs $95. That's a lot of money for anybody. That's a lot of money. And dining out costs are only getting higher. So now you just wanna add a little bit of water to the baking dish, and this is going to steam the flesh. It'll make it easier to take it out of the skin, and it helps it to cook a little faster as well. Stick this in the oven at 375 for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. So now with our squash and our pumpkin in the oven roasting, let's go ahead and chop up the carrot and the onion. You don't necessarily have to peel the carrot, just make sure that the carrots are cleaned. Medium sized rough chop will do and you just need about three fourths of a cup. All right, let's set those off to the side for now. So the pumpkin and the butternut squash has been in the oven for about an hour and 15 minutes at 375, as I mentioned. You'll know that they're done when the skin starts to form kind of a char on the outside, sort of a bakey color. And when the squash itself is very soft to the touch from the outside. Just take your squash, take a large spoon, and just scoop the flesh out into a bowl. When you're scooping, try not to get any of the skin, although it's probably gonna happen because it happens to me all the time, so just make sure that you pick the skin off and any little seeds that you accidentally missed, pick those out as well. Now, if you would like to use a canned pumpkin, uh, you can, certainly. Uh, you'll need to use about three cups of a canned pumpkin if that's the route that you decide to go. But in my opinion, I just think that you're gonna get a nicer flavor from a roasted pumpkin. And since you already have to roast the butternut squash, you might as well just buy a pumpkin. I mean, they're everywhere this time of year. Either way, it's up to you. Like I said, if you're going to use canned pumpkins, you'll need three cups. In a very large Dutch oven or a large stock pot, with your heat on a medium high heat, add two tablespoons of olive oil. Once the oil begins to shimmer, add your onion and your carrot. Stir the onions and the carrots until the carrots begin to soften and the onions become translucent. Next, add four cups or 32 ounces of vegetable broth. Add one half of a teaspoon of ginger powder, one half of a teaspoon of onion powder, 
one half of a teaspoon of garlic powder, one half of a teaspoon of ground white pepper, one fourth of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, one fourth of a teaspoon of curry powder, two cardamom pods, a half of a cup of dark brown sugar, the juice of one half of a lemon, and one third of a cup of apple juice. Stir that mixture and then add in your pumpkin and your butternut squash. And bring this mixture to a boil. Once this mixture begins to boil, reduce your heat to a medium low and then cover and simmer for 25 to 30 minutes. Now that the soup has been simmering for about 25 to 30 minutes, the final step is to add the heavy whipping cream and to puree the soup. So to the soup, add one cup of heavy whipping cream. One way that you can puree the soup is to use what's called an immersion blender. And this is a handheld blender that does exactly what it says. You immerse the blender into the soup and you can puree the soup right in the pot. However, I find that the best way to puree the soup is to use a blender because this is a very, very creamy soup. And sometimes when you're using an immersion blender, you really don't get that consistency that you're looking for. It doesn't come out to be as smooth as you would like it to be. Now, this is a commercial Vitamix blender, which holds about eight cups. You may or may not have a Vitamix blender in your kitchen. If you do have one, I recommend that you use it. If not, however, uh, just go ahead and use your regular residential blender. So no matter what size blender you're using, just make sure that you puree the soup in small batches no more than halfway up the canister. The reason for that is you need to make sure that you allow enough room in the canister for the steam to escape. Otherwise, when you turn on the blender, um, it will explode. I've had it happen to me before. It's quite dangerous, actually. It's not fun at all. It's a huge mess. And you obviously run the risk of really seriously burning yourself. And then allowing a steam vent in the lid, lid the soup, and hold the lid on very gently with a towel. And then start your blender on the lowest speed possible. <laughs> I guess you gotta turn the blender on first. <laughs> you have to be smarter than your blender, um, which clearly I'm not. <laughs> they didn't teach me how to turn on a blender in dummy school. <laughs> Okay, all right. I'm so nervous about the soup exploding that I forgot to turn the damn blender on. All right, all right, here we go, very slowly. And now you just wanna blend the soup until it is a very creamy consistency and all of the carrot, the onion, squash, and pumpkin has been broken down into the puree. Now, once you're done with this batch and you need to continue on with the rest of your soup, you have two options. You can either dump this into a separate bowl because this has already been pureed, or you can pour it back into the pot and then continue to puree until all of the soup becomes a bisque-like consistency. So however many batches this takes you um, depends obviously on how big your blender is. When I was first learning how to cook like 70 years ago, I was making a cream of cauliflower soup and I dumped the entire pot of the boiling soup into my residential size blender uh, to puree it. It was a pureed cauliflower soup and I turned it on and literally it shot everywhere. It was like, it sounded like a gunshot went off. There was cauliflower soup like dripping down from the ceiling. It was on my cabinets, it was in my hair. It burned me. I mean, it was terrible, terrible. So please just use extreme caution when you are pureeing a hot soup in a blender. The very final thing is just to salt your soup to taste. I'm going to add two very large pinches of salt. Give it a stir and then just give it one final taste. Perfect. So now I've got my little pepitas here that I talked about. So I actually just bought these at my grocery store. Quite frankly, this time of year, you can find them anywhere. All right, my friends, I hope you're enjoying your fall season so far, even though it's about 89 degrees where I'm at right now. <laughs> oh, well, you know, who says that Florida doesn't have seasons? We have tourist season, hurricane season, alligator mating season, love bug season. <laughs> Until I see you all again, make it an awesome, awesome day. Cheers, I love y'all. And for more great soup recipes, check out right here. It really is delicious.